Hi there, how are we doing? Capacitors. That sounds a bit like deja vu, that doesn't it? I'm sure I've done a video on capacitors. I have, but just had a quick look at the uh, capacitor just to see what how it works. It, you know, you charge it up and then discharge it. But capacitors are used in so many circuits, basically like resistors. You look at any circuit and you're going to find a capacitor and a resistor in that circuit. So I suppose I'm going to have to learn a little bit about the mass that's involved. I do try to keep the mass down to a minimum, but the capacitors, apparently they can be quite little complex things, so I'm going to have to get on and learn a bit of maths for it. So let's do that. Let's have a look at the mass. Okay, so what is the mass for dealing with a uh, capacitor? Now, apparently the the most basic one is this. Q equals capacitance times voltage. Now, <coughs> Q equals charge. I suppose that's, that's charge as energy in the capacitor. And the capacitor is it's the capacitance measured in farads. And the voltage measured in volts. So, let's have a quick look at... Um, that equation. Now, in my previous uh, video I had a capacitor, I put some voltage across it and um, created some charge. So I had a thousand microfarad, which is basically a, a, a one millifarad capacitor, and I put three volts in. So what does the charge equal? So I presume that must be the capacitance times by the voltage which gives me 0.003 coulombs but what's a coulomb? According to this it's a measurement of charge I presume that's some sort of energy but um, when I'm working in the circuit I'm usually working with current, voltage and current so charge in coulombs doesn't really mean a lot to me so I don't really know what's going on there so just to help me maybe understand some stuff um, I've got a little chart and I'll just go to this one this is what I was doing last time I had a resistor a switch or I'm just moving a wire across to charge up the capacitor and then I'd move this switch over and discharge through that resistor, through this LED to ground. So simple. The electrons, well, conventional flow says that the electrons will flow that way. And I believe that um, <coughs> uh, electrons are negatively charged, but what we end up with is the a build-up of charge on one plate like so and a charge of the opposing current charge whatever it is on the other side so it builds up and then when we switch over they then flow that way and discharge seems reasonably sensible so back to the mass again like I said the equation is given as charge in coulombs but we're dealing with current so <clears throat> the next one I found is for current which I want to know about it equals the capacitance divided the capacitance times by the delta V divided by delta T, V being volts and T being time. And what's the delta? Well apparently the delta is the change, sometimes written it with a triangle. So it's the change in voltage divided by the change in time. Well what does that mean? Well if I've read it correctly, going back to our charts and stuff what I've got here is a chart that shows that as the voltage when you turn it on 
here we've got zero I've got no current flow and I've got no voltage but as soon as I turn it on the voltage across the capacitor starts to starts to rise very quickly at first and then tails off until it gets nearer and nearer to the so apply voltage which in this case was three volts and the current that's flowing through the circuit starts off high and very quickly goes down until it's almost zero basically and there's no current flow in the circuit because the capacitor as it charges up becomes higher and higher in resistance so the whole voltage is dropped across the capacitor and when you've got a very high resistance the current can't flow but that current isn't just being blocked it's actually being stored in the capacitor as a charge so that when we then switch it over it then flows through the LED to to the negative to earth sounds simple but obviously there's a certain time frame that between zero and let's say this point let's call that two volts after a certain amount of time we're going to have got to two volts and let's just say uh, you can calculate this there is an equation for it but I'm not going to deal with that today or you can actually sit there with a stopwatch and do like the experiment I did before with a single capacitor and just time and time it and see how long it takes and write down at, at, at one volt it was this much time at two volts it was this much time but I'm just going to pick a number out of the hat just for, for, for ease I'm going to say at that point is five seconds so I suppose the change is the time between a point so here we're choosing the point of zero to there so the change is two volts between zero and two two volts that's the time of change over five seconds so I suppose going back to this equation I'm saying that the voltage is two volts after five seconds so am I right to think that two volts divided by five 0.4 but then I got to times that at by the capacitor or got to times the capacitance by that so the capacitance being a thousand microfarads or one millifarad 0.001 times by 0.4 so the current if this is correct if I've done it right is saying that the current is 0.0004 amps that's 0.4 milliamps or 400 microamps seems simple enough um, and I suppose one of the ways to, to find that out would be to again to sit there with my stopwatch and actually charge a capacitor up see how long it takes do the mass that's involved and prove that it works not going to do that this time some I might do actually do off camera and just to just to verify that this mass is correct. So at the moment I'm only dealing with um, two equations. I'm dealing with this one, supposedly it's given me the current, and I'm dealing with this one, which has given me the charge. Other than that, I don't want to get any more technical than that really. So if anybody's got any comments about whether they think this is right or wrong, please put it in the post because um, I'm not really sure. Am I, got this, am I doing this right? Have I got it right? Am I understanding these equations correctly? Uh, like I say, capacitors is not as simple as it seems. So, yeah, all comments welcome. So there you go. That's just a little bit of the mass that's involved with capacitors. Apparently there's, uh, there's a lot more involved, especially when I start looking at how they're constructed and the mass required to understand the change and charge and whatever else that goes on with capacitors and I've only looked at um, DC I haven't looked at uh, AC alternating frequencies within a circuit so I imagine there's a lot more mass to come 
unfortunately, but um, so I'm going to have to get to grips with. So if you like this video, subscribe, and I'll uh, catch you next time.